us with Maluka here. Okay, so let me just sound check. Uh, can you hear myself okay? I'm Vanessa Jean. Adam, do a sound check. And making sure you can hear myself as well. Sounds good. Yep. Okay, we're going to get started right now. Who's ready to take a little dance into the magical, the miraculous, the spiritual, and deeper connections with the plants and cells? Who's ready? Give me a wave. Yeah? All right. Okay, well, I'm Vanessa Jean, and this is my amazing soul brother, Adam Barrelay, and together we decided to get together to co-create this beautiful, exquisite, yummy baby. She's birthed into the world with a bang. We, between us, have over 40 years of essential oil experience. I've been teaching for over 20 years in alignment with retreats, and um, foodie creations, cacao is a particular love of mine. Um, and just working with people on a deeper level to help them to expand. And I'll let Adam introduce himself in a moment. My background's in psychology, and I'm currently just upgrading and um, re-qualifying with certain things, and I'm studying my clinical aromatherapy, so that's been a joy. I love geeking out on the science. So Dr. Hill for me is like, for those of you that have heard any of his amazing stuff. Today we're going to deep dive with you and have lots of fun with you. So use the chat function and ask questions and let's get really playful. Adam, over to you, honey. Thank you very much. So my name is Adam Barrelay. I'm, as I said, the co-author of this book. Um, I grew up in the bush hills of Perth, Western Australia. So surrounded by animals such as kookaburras and kangaroos and the like. So nature has always played a really important role for me. And as I started to grow up into my teenage years, where other teenagers were locking themselves in their bedroom and listening to loud music, I would escape into the bush. And so I've always found solace and comfort and even guidance from the different gifts of nature. So I've, as well as working with essential oils, I work with uh, crystals, I work with animal guides, um, and so on. So when... Um, I've, I've been working with essential oils for about 25 years. It started off with just, you know, a couple in a good old oil burner um, many years ago when I was that teenager. Um, and, and that love has just kind of grown over time. And that's kind of culminated in the book that we're um, really excited to share with you all today. Um, the, the approach we took with this book um, is, is slightly different. What we've done is in, we've talked about, we talk about over a hundred different essential oils, just single oils in this book. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to take you back to understanding the plant that gifts us that oil. Who's read an autobiography or a biography or even seen a movie about someone's life before? And after you've read that or seen that movie, you've gone, I really understand. I really get that person. So what Vanessa and I want to do today is we want to guide you through how, if you can understand the plant, you know what that oil does. You don't even need to refer to someone else that plant and that oil can talk directly to you. So we wrote this book on the summer solstice two years ago, which was around, uh, for us, that's December the 22nd, um, when you know, all the Northern Hemisphere individuals are suffering in the cold. We're basking in over 100 degrees Fahrenheit heat. So we were surrounded by little bandicoots that are kind of these, how would I describe? It's like a big but cute rat. Um, they were scurrying around our feet. We had cook burrows and what came around and flew and how we decided to do it is instead of just writing it all out we actually just sat with each of the oils we spoke from our experience and we spoke what came to us as we um as we smelt that oil and we just dictated that to a recorder and then that was annotated and that became the creation of the book so that's a little bit about us and the creation of the book but if you've got your book definitely have it nearby and if you're still eagerly waiting for the postman to arrive i'm sure it won't be too long but what, how we actually divided the book up is we didn't actually put it in totally alphabetical order. We divided it into certain families. Who here has heard of the magical elements before, of fire, air, earth, and water? Now, I'm sure you may have heard of it maybe with your star sign. So do we have any fire signs here today? Any Sagittarians, any Aries, or even any Leos? Got a few Leos, yes. Leos? It's our turn to be in the spotlight, so I need to be quiet for the next hour. Thank you. 
So then we have the air signs, you know, we've got the Geminis and the Aquarians and the Librans and so on. So we know a little bit about the elements that way. And depending on where you're born, that's kind of your do dominant element. Now with plans, we didn't go around and ask the plans when their birthday was. What we've noticed is when you look at where the plant gets the oil from, that gives us an idea of what element that's associated with. So what me and Vanessa want to do in the next hour is we want to guide you through the magical elements and how that can give you a really great understanding of each essential oil in your collection. So we're going to start with the element of earth. Now this is Vanessa's, maybe Vanessa's favorite. She's a Capricorn. Do we have any other earth signs on at the moment? Any Capricorns, Virgos or Taurians? Yay. Beautiful. Oh, lots of Capricorns. Excellent. Um, now, when you think of the element of earth, what kind of words come to mind? So not the whole planet, but just the bit of dirt beneath your feet. Wow, we've got a lot of Capricorns. Grounding, well, beautiful. Because we rock, Adam, you just have to face it. Capricorns rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're getting a lot of that ground, you know, grounding, mm -hmm. solidarity, resilience, that type of thing. So any plant that gifts us an oil, from its wood, its bark, or its roots is associated with the element of earth. And if you've got the book, we actually talk about that on page 33. And we give you a bit of an introduction on that. So let's talk about some of the oils that are given to us by from the earth element. So I'm gonna talk about trees. So the big wood strong oils that give us that resilience and that strength. But as you look deeper into each of the trees, you'll see that there's a difference. And I want to kind of use three different oils. And I saw that was some of some people's favorites before. I want to talk about arborvitae, cedarwood, and sandalwood. So first of all, they all bring us strength and grounding. But arborvitae, let's look at arborvitae. The oil is so strong in that big tree that insects don't bore into it. It doesn't rot. And even when it dies and falls over, it can take hundreds of years for it to decay. So when you have people that are trying to eat at you, little pesky things trying to niggle you and get, you know, when we have like a mercury retrograde or something like that, arborvitae is a great oil to give you that strength to say, leave me alone. It's a big tall tree with not very many branches going out, just focuses towards the heavens. And how often do we have our, our mission or what we, our soul calls us to do but then little distractions come. We go, oh, I've got Sunday off. I'm going to do what I want. But then one of the kids needs something or a friend needs something. So we can reach for Arbor Vitae when we need just to be left alone and have our strengths and our resilience. Now, as we move across to cedarwood, another big, strong tree. But if you look at the cedarwood tree, its branches stretch out. Do we have anyone here who feels that sometimes they get lost in the crowd or that when they're with their family or a large group that they kind of, they lose their sense of who they are. Well, this is where cedarwood is absolutely amazing because cedarwood has that strength to it. Its roots go deep into the ground, but it embraces other people. I am who I am, but I'm going to embrace being in part of a community because the cedarwood trees in Europe and North America would grow so big that often be used to, uh, the wood would be used to construct communal halls and gathering places, places where communities came together. So cedarwood helps you when you're out and being part of a community to stay strong in who you are while embracing other people. And then we have sandalwood. Now, for Anessa and I were very blessed uh, at the start of last year, we were invited by doTERRA to go to Hawaii and we got to plant some sandalwood trees where doTERRA is reforesting a, a, an area of farmland and bringing back the sandalwood forests that were originally there. But what we learned while we are there is you can't just plant sandalwood. You have to plant other species of trees next to it. Because what the sandalwood will do is when it gets to a certain age, its roots will reach out and it will hold on to the roots of another tree and rely on that for nitrogen and other nutrients. So sandalwood teaches us about that we do need other people and to have strength through drawing from other people. We're communal beings, we need that. So do you see how all the wood oils give us strength, but the separate characteristics of the tree is passed on to the oil. And so when I need to be left alone 
when I need my own space, I can reach for Arba Vitae and not get drawn into the distractions of others. When I need to stand true in my own truth and who I am, when I'm out with other people, I've got cedarwood. And when I really need to embrace and form healthy give and take relationships that are strong and we rely on each other for what we need without depleting each other, I can reach for sandalwood. So that's kind of an idea of how you can look at the trees and get an idea of the oil. So, so Vanessa, you I'm, 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 I'm talking about the, the barks and the roots, I might let you I know. will, I will, sweetie. We've got a question here just saying, what's the difference with the normal sandwood in Hawaiian? It's actually land. So someone was mentioning that the Abovite, that beautiful big red cedar, just comes from their homeland, right? So it's really beautiful to work with energetically the plants from your homeland. It's amazing. But also just with those that resonate with you. So I used to work a lot with Indian sandalwood, which is what you're calling the normal one. Um, and since I met doTERRA and Hawaiian sandalwood, I can't get enough of Hawaiian sandalwood. It's more about the vibration. So it's a very shamanic land. Not that India isn't magical and amazing. I'm so aligned with India. But um, it's just probably where I moved and wanted and aligned with that energy. So it just depends on the, sm the smell is different, both of the smells. Have both and just feel which one calls to you for any given blend. Okay, so I want to um, I want to bring your awareness to the barks. I love the barks and the roots. And something I love about what we've done with this beautiful book is we have some complementing yummy um gifts from mama earth in different ways so we've got crystals from adam because he's like crystal king absolutely amazing but we also have cacao in here because that's something that i really really love to jam with and you all can get your hands on the cacao addict i've got the book just up there courtney if you want to link them that's available from oil life as well and the cacao addict has all sorts of um beautiful synergies which are synergistic blends you can create in cacao now, in our book on page 22, we have a sacred heart elixir. Each of our essential oils have two page spread, you'll notice. And in them, there are like three key words that really resonated for us with that particular part of the plant or tree. And then there's a gift that the plant gives. So for cassia, which I'm going to move to next, my gift to you is self-assurance. The three words are warmth embracing and reverence we have a key practice with each of them and a beautiful affirmation and the affirmation with this exquisite warm oil is i invite warm and meaningful connections to me so he brings warmth now i have actually placed him with turmeric black pepper copper cinnamon cassia cardamom and wild orange in this sacred heart elixir and the reason is this Oftentimes in life, we put barriers up around our hearts. They serve a purpose for an amount, a period of time, an amount of time. These barriers can extend and wrap all around our entire being and our psyche. And they can become less than useful after time. They can stop us from allowing the divine transmission to come through or deeper unions and loving embraces with humanity, with the animals, with the plants. So Cassia wraps you in his warm embrace, inviting you to melt some of the hardness or the icicles that may be appearing in different parts of your energy body. And what I find is, is that the barks like cinnamon and Cassia help us to know when we need those energetic boundaries and the protection and we can lean into that and when we need to melt a little, dissolve a little, surrender a little. And what I really love is when we move into just taking a step into the roots, you know, if you imagine the barks of this protective warmth embrace that have this dual function of reminding us when it's just a little too much, just surrender a little, you can let love in to and open to the divine to protecting us when we maybe leak too much energy out or when we just um, give our power away, you know, they're a good reminder. And what we can do is we can align it with a root, something like spikenard or vetiver, to help us to bring that divine transmission that's coming through down into our heart space that we wanted to share with the world 
and help us just to ground and earth it so that we're continually replenished. Because that saying, as above and so below, can also be related to what we allow ourselves to bring up from below, from the heart of Mother Earth or Mama Gaia. We refer to Mother Earth as Gaia in this book. So as we bring her love up into us, we pour love and gratitude back into her. And we do the same with the heavens or the cosmos or, you know, God energy, God or goddess energy. We bring that down into us. We bring that beautiful divine transmission in and we let that go out into the world. The roots help us to anchor. So we're not just squandering our energy, releasing it unwittingly or unconsciously. The roots, while they're very grounding and earthing, they absolutely are, they're very sacred. So they help to bring peace and tranquility to the mind, to the actual brain, working with our chemistry. Spike mat is really beautiful for this. So the spike mat spikes the mood, takes us into a new way of being. Spike mat in traditional times has been used in sacred ceremony. And whether it began with Mary Magdalene or not, we'll never know, but it was said that she anointed the feet of Jesus. This is something really beautiful because the act of anointing one's feet is the act of surrendering, of allowing ourselves to humble ourselves before that person in love and to just say, I meet you, I see you, I'm here to serve. What happens is, is we open ourselves to more of that transmission to come through, more of that light to come through, and for the blessings to be more and more unfolding in our life and those that we touch and bless. So just a different way to look at the roots as well, other than just grounding and earthing. They do that, but they also bring a deep element of the sacred to our day, and they do that by bringing deep peace and greater union with the divine. So you can see now, basically, if you know an essential oil comes from the wood or the roots or the bark, it's going to be that strength. It's going to be about surviving in that physical world and that type of thing as well. So now let's move on to the next element. If you're following along with the book, we're going to go to page 69. I feel like I'm like a school teacher all of a sudden. Um, so um, we're going to talk about the element of water. You know, these are our Pisces, our Cancerians and our Scorpios. What kind of words come to mind when you think of either those star signs or just the element of water? Very cleansing, flow. Yeah, beautiful. Very much water is about the emotions, feelings, and love. So what part of a plant do you think might be associated with the element of water? I'll give you a hint. For Valentine's Day, I think you would have been disappointed if you got a bunch of leaves. Flowers, there we go. We've got a smart group on here. Exactly. So flowers are all about the element of water and emotions. And what is the action of a flower throughout its life? It opens up. So each flower, in a different way, allows us to open up. Open up to the world. Open up to other people in whole different ways. Now... One way that we can look at each of the flowers and get an idea of what that, flower, that flower's energy is, is from the colour. And our ancestors used to associate different coloured flowers with different planets. And so there's a table on page 69 of our book that kind of links them all. But I want to talk about one of my favourite, which are white flowers. And white flowers are associated with the moon. So what's everyone's favourite white flowers? The first one I want to talk about is one I've been using over the last few days, and that's jasmine. Now, jasmine, when you think about jasmine, what shape is a jasmine flower? It's the shape of a star. And when does it blossom? It blossoms at night. So when we have a sea of stars above us, in a field of jasmine, it mirrors that sea of stars below. So jasmine is amazing for waking us up to our own magic and the magic of the universe. It's renowned for, yes, it's renowned for an aphrodisiac and creativity in that. But what me and Vanessa have found is the more you dive into, uh, into jasmine, that it can open you up to the magic of the world. This is an oil that if you want to connect with angels, star beings, all that, you know, the galactical energies of the world. And that's one of the words we actually describe with jasmine is galactic. And it's amazing. 
And my favorite way to use Jasmine or my favorite time to use Jasmine is during the full moon, which is happening. It's just finishing up right now. So in those three nights of the full moon, it's a great one to help slow us down, open up our creativity, open up our intuition, because that's what the moon, when she's at her peak, is encouraging us to do. Does anyone go a little bit crazy or become a bit of a lunatic around the full moon? It's often I find because people are trying to go, 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 when the moon's going slow, 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 slow. So Jasmine can really help us to work in harmony with that, with the magic of the world. Now on the full moon, I reach for Jasmine, but on the new moon, I reach for another white flower, and that is magnolia. Now, whereas many of the other flowers, like uh, rose and neroli, have this very queenly kind of energy, Magnolia, I find, is a little bit different. The, the family of magnolia trees is actually 95 million years old. They were actually around before bees existed. They used to rely on beetles to pollinate them. So magnolia has a bit more, instead of having this kind of queenly energy, it's more of like the queen mother energy. Was there anyone who enjoyed Game of Thrones? I, I was a fan of Game of Thrones. We won't talk about that last season, but Game of Thrones, if you remember Lady Tyrell, that's Magnolia. And what I love about Magnolia is she's so calming and reassuring. You know, whoever gets to the end of the day and they're like, I didn't do everything on my list. I stuffed something up and they're beating themselves up. And what happens is where we, and we give you a practice on each page of the book and one we love to do in Magnolia is just get her in her little touch roller and roll and draw a heart over there. And basically Magnolia, that, that reassuring grandmother basically goes, love? I've been through 15 world wars, 19 husbands and 16 famines. And what you're worrying about today just doesn't matter. Because think about it. Today is the 8th of April, 2020. What were you worrying about on the 8th of April last year? You probably can't remember. But isn't it amazing how in the moment it can be so epic? And so to bring us back into a, a reassuring that we're doing a good job, it's going to be fine. This too will pass. Magnolia is really reassuring in that way. So those are two of my white flowers are really helping us to remember our own magic and that we, we have everything we need and that we are enough as well. Yeah, so I'm a big fan of those two. And I'm going to bring some focus on Rose and touch on Lang Lang, maybe a couple of others as well. But Rose for me is one that I use every day with Frankie Boy. I lean into her every single day. I use magnolia at night around my eyes, swipe under my nose, on my wrists, over my heart center, just before sleep and behind my neck. And Rose, I just take her with me wherever I go. Where magnolia I love using for tapping into that wise woman crone energy with something like myrrh. I'll use Rose with myrrh to tap into my inner queen and becoming comfortable with my cycle. So we all have our different lunar cycles, right? For me at the moment, I'm perimenopausal and these two are hugely supportive. Rose is like the queen of the floral kingdom in this beautiful land of aromatherapy. The three words we've attributed with her are desire, magnetism and beauty. And she reminds us that our beauty and our light radiate from within. You can go into deep meditative practices with her. For those of you that find self-loathing is a huge issue, she'll help you to come back into that place of self-love. She's not just about love in the human sense. This is about divine love. This is about unconditional love, something that we all hear about and aspire to. And she says, simply be it. Become the embodiment of it right? So the more that you call unconditional love to you and, and make the practice of radiating that out of you, the deeper connection you have with yourself, right? Because you are divine. So Rose says, my gift to you is love. And her affirmation is, my heart is a magnet for love and miracles. There's a really beautiful blend here. We have three per, per essential oil, like I said. And there's one here I just want to share because as we come into a deeper space of love, we align naturally with the vibration of gratitude. And gratitude is the highest form of receivership. So anytime you want to invite more of the miraculous into your life, when you want to manifest, 
in your um, meditations or when you are praying to call something into your life, say it in the affirmative. Bring it in with the power of gratitude. I am so grateful for... Ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. Rose works magnificently with all of the rays of abundance. Abundance isn't just financial, though that is fantastic and powerful and you want to keep bringing that in so that you can serve. The rays of abundance come in from the love ray as well, from the health ray, yeah? So she helps you to bring it in. So the grateful heart blend that we have here is rose, frankincense, green mandarin, and spikenard. So spikenard I touched on earlier, green mandarin brings the delight. Spikenard's anchoring our gratitude so that every cell in our body is thrumming with it. Our brain chemistry shifts and recalibrates with it. The rose unfurls the wings of the heart to have us extending out with that love and that gratitude out into the world. And frankincense is this total divine alignment. It's like getting into the elevator and pushing the button on the penthouse suite and whoop, there you go. So you've got this really powerful blend of essential oils. You know, we talk about rose being the highest vibration of all the essential oils, where our body, you know, resonates with, with the Hertz frequency at around the 70s. Um, the rose is 322 megahertz, so 320. So it's like you're looking at around four times more than our, our actual physical body, but we know we're beyond that. And Rose comes in and says, remember, remember you are beyond that. Remember that you are beings of light, of love. Remember what you're here to do. And we're here to seed love into the world, gratitude, hope, the remembrance that the return to love is a choice. Lanyolene comes in as that maiden energy and she's that reminder to delight and have joy as you weave love and miracles into the world. However you do that, because we all do that so differently, right? So she comes in so beautifully and we've got, we've got her in a couple of blends on this page, but I really love, you know, delighting in my life and bringing the Lang Lang and the Green Mandarin to do that aligning with Rose, yeah? Okay, so those are our flowers. So. Does anyone else have, we, we've probably got a couple more minutes we can spend on the flowers. Any favourite roses that you're really passionate or any favourite flowers you're passionate about that you'd like us to touch on a little bit? Pop that in the chat. I love that Jess has written that Magnolia is blooming here right now. You know, it's so beautiful when you can be around the actual energy of them when they're blooming, when they're blossoming and to really tune into that frequency. Blue Lotus, let's do it, brother. Blue Lotus is one we are so excited about. I can see Neroli's there and Jasmine. Look, they're in the book. Blue Lotus isn't yet. So shall we give you a little sneak peek on Blue Lotus? Would you like that? Give me a wave if you want some Blue Lotus magic. If y'all don't have her, if you haven't ordered the Mother's Day pack, get on and order her. Adam, you start and I'm going to wrap her up with a, a little more of magic. Okay, so a couple of things about Blue Lotus. First of all, what makes her so special, as we know, whereas pretty much all of our other essential oils grow on the land, she grows on the water. And in fact, she doesn't grow in the water, she rises above it. Now, remember we're talking about uh, water, it's about the emotions and feelings. And so Blue Lotus can actually help us to rise above our emotion. I, my, my question to you is, are your emotions running you or are you running your emotions? What Blue Lotus allows us to do is to be like the most divine queen or king of our queendom or kingdom. And when our emotions come to us, instead of getting overwhelmed and drowned in them, in the water, we rise above that. And it's like a, your emotions are your subjects. And they come and they let you know that something's not right. When we feel upset, angry, frustrated, or any of those kind of emotions. And as the queen of our queendom, we listen to our subjects and we go, thank you. I understand that something's not right. This is not in alignment with who I am. Leave it with me, I'll act upon it. And so instead of being that reactive, we can actually become that more proactive and, and work with our emotions. Now the beautiful thing, bit of a quiz for you. If I was to take a lotus flower and pour five liters of vinegar on it, what do you think it would smell like? 
Or even if I was to get a, a fine perfume, maybe a Chanel number no. five and pour five liters of Chanel number no. five on it, what would it smell like? Just right in the chat, you guys. Yeah. The answer, it would still smell like a blue lotus. A blue well lotus. Done, Karen. Yep. Well done. It, exactly. It repels other liquids. So what blue lotus, the flower and its gift and its essential oil does for us, it allows us to be like the lotus flower. When people throw vinegar at you in the way of criticisms or insults or trying to drag you down, it just rolls off you like water off a duck's back. And when people give you compliments or flattery or embellishments, that also doesn't have an impact on you. And sometimes people go, whoa, 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 hold on, Adam. I need to listen to the good stuff because that's how I feel. That's how I learn to love myself. But there can be two challenges with doing this. Well, you see what happens if you start to believe all the compliments and all the flattery too much. We see what happens sometimes with sporting stars or rock stars. They, their ego takes them off and they go a little bit off the rails. The other thing is, if we start trying to just get perfume and avoid the vinegar, we start altering who we are to make sure that everyone's happy with us and, and that we don't get any vinegar. And I'm sure you've realised that no matter who you are, whether you're Joe Bloggs or Madonna, it's people that's going to love you and people that are not going to like you. But Blue Lotus helps us to not take those two things on board too much and to make sure we're listening to ourselves and we stay authentic to ourselves. So that's why I'm really excited about working with Blue Lotus more. Oh, I love that, Adam. Thank you. You know, you know how you hear some people talk about some of the oils and they relate them to um, maybe like a religious icon or a deity or a god or a goddess. I just... When I smell blue lotus, I keep lifting my wrist because when I was anointed with her, I just connected so deeply with her. She's she's beyond all of that. She, like Adam says, she rises from those murky waters, adorned in her purpley blue mantle. She knows who she is. She's solid in who she is. Like an empress, unwavering in her surety of who she is. That's a blue lotus. Blue lotus is actually a lily and she is exquisite, absolutely exquisite. She's very rare. What I find unbelievable is doTERRA's insight, foresight, intuition. This is how aligned with the divine they are to bring blue lotus in right now because that Mother's Day gift box of blue lotus, rose, magnolia, jasmine, neroli are high vibration, floral essential oils that work to support us to create more robustness and more resilience against the negativity. You know, if we use the word virus out there, not in the medical sense, virus, the viruses of negativity, the viruses of people's story upon us that we take in and like a virus in a computer, they corrupt us. The florals help to resist that. Right? They help us to bounce that away. Something my daddy told me from when I was a little girl that I love was he used to have me cocoon in, in the light of the divine. And he'd say, white light or golden light, whatever you want to imagine, baby girl, of either of those two lights and imagine their words or whatever you feel that isn't so great coming at you like a boomerang. So do you all know what a boomerang is in Australia? You know, a boomerang. And it comes out this beautiful bubble of love around you of divine protection and it bounces back and as it bounces back you send it back with love and the flowers remind us of that they keep us in that strong place right do any of you just write in the chat have any of you ever felt like you're just not from here you're just like holy heck what happened did the stalk just drop me in the wrong spot wrong family wrong wrong planet maybe see all the yeses coming in so I want to share something with you. Blue Lotus is going to help you to connect with your home. So you feel more at home in you. You feel more at home with where you are. You feel more connected with the cosmos, more at home in the stars, wherever it is that you feel home, my loves. You will have heard the expression star seed out there. It's been away around for forever and a day, for as long as there have been stars in the sky. And really, if I can, I mean, you can Google it, you can look it up, but I just want to simplify it for you. If you imagine a star so bright, and we are all that, we're divine sparks of the divine, right? Of, of that 
yummy vibrational high powered energy and we are here to seed certain things into the world and we all have our purpose we all have our mission and blue lotus is reminding us what are you here to see stand up be true be who you really are this is beyond just dreaming big and then dreaming bigger this is about bringing it to planet earth because she needs you right now and these humans these muggles on the earth they need you right now. They need the high vibing light beings. You are guardians of the light. You are guardians of what is true and wholesome and real. And sometimes you just got to get fierce with it. You need to stay the course now more than ever. And this pack of flowers that doTERRA brought out right now are the best reminder for us to stay resilient and strong and to keep choosing love. It's a choice. And that's what the floral kingdom remind us so beautifully. And Blue Lotus, as this queen, as Adam said, or king or empress of all, of everything, comes in and she's just like, it's time. Be so sure of yourself that you are unwavering in that. Be magical, get big, get bold, be cosmic. She is sensual and she is sexual and she is delicate and she is strong she's all of it in one because she's beyond dichotomies that's that's humans that do that humans go there's either this or there's that there's not it's just we are all one and if there's something these current times are reminding us is the truth of that okay Right. Ed, Ed just asked a question about is all this info in the book yes you can probably say that me and Vanessa we always run ourselves into trouble with time because we've got, we've got double spreads on, on over 100 oils. Every oil that doTERRA has done, um, apart from some that just recently releases, is in this book. And we go through all the things we've been sharing with you and more and blends and that kind of thing. So there's a bit of a, a flash there of black spruce is in there and that type of thing as well. So yes, yeah. we'll find all that. Um, quick question, Joanne said, what crystals work with Blue Lotus? Tanzanite, Tanzanora quartz, Apophyllite, Petalite, Phenakite, Naturite, Scolocyte, Herkimer Diamond, or your blue and your clear ones, the high vibration ones. That's my kind of thing as well. Hey, now, honey, my job Adam, is moving on. Come on, Adam. Adam, take a yep. breath. Adam has an amazing YouTube channel. Just get on, and he teaches about all of the crystals on that, and he can link it later. But there's so much there, and so much of the stuff you're going to find, all those gorgeous books in Oil Life where you go, what crystal can I do that? You can just have a look on his YouTubes, and it's all there and all the oils. Okay, go, go, brother, go. Yeah, now, and I've got a Blue Lotus one on my YouTube, and I talk, I've i actually listened to those crystals there because I know I talk fast and I talk funny because I'm Australian as well. So <laughs> let's move on to our next element. Let's go on to air. These are our Geminis. Woohoo! our Librans and our Aquarians. What do you think of when you think of those star signs and you think of that element, just the wind that blows around the world? Pop that in the chat as we talk. Visionary, cleansing, energizing, change, yeah. And if you look at those signs as well, they're very much about the mind. They're about the intellect, they're about thought. So whereas water is about how I feel, air is about how I think. So what part of a plant do you think might be associated with the element of air and the mind? Love those words coming through in the chat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. The leaves. Spot on, Amy. You can tell Amy's one of my beautiful members of my doTERRA family. <laughs> so the leaves. And I'm going to even divide the leaves into two subgroups. So... Even if you don't have your oils around you, I just want you to close your eyes for a second. And I want you to inhale as though you can, based on your memory, I want you to inhale rosemary. And just feel what that does to your mind. Now in your next breath in, I want you to breathe in Siberian fur. And what does that do to the mind? So feel free to share that in the chat, what difference you notice. But what we've noticed is that any leaf oil that comes from a small plant, so here we're looking at our herbs, thyme, oregano, basil, 
some are savory, lemongrass, peppermint, spearmint. These oils help to focus the mind. They give a surety. For example, our ancestors used to say, basil helps to put a scorpion in the mind. I love it. Whoever tries to meditate, and after two minutes, they think about what to dinner or paying off the credit card. Try putting basil in your third eye chakra and it helps to focus it beautifully. Now, the big tree leaf oils, so this is our eucalyptuses, our ferns, our spruces, cypresses. They don't narrow the mind, they open the mind. And do you notice I love Siberian fir? Whenever I smell the firs or the spruces, it's like I'm walking through a big forest. I miss my time when I lived in New York and when I lived in Toronto and got to go and walk through the forest. Where, you know, we'd go out where the leaves were changing and it'd be so beautiful and it would put everything in perspective. So the, the big tree leaf oils open up the mind, help us heal, let go of the past, see the past with a new perspective in that type of way as well. So in the book, what you'll notice, if you start looking at how many leaf oils there are, there are many oils that come from leaves. And me and Vanessa could sit here for 24 hours and talk about leaf oils to you, but we want to open it up and see which oils from leaves do you absolutely love that you'd like us to talk about. Right, lemongrass. I'll talk about lemongrass, and I'm also going to talk about um, a, a bit of a sister plant, palmarosa. Who got the palmarosa from doTERRA last month as well? Now, when we look at those plants, we look at the leaves, and they're like swords. So often, what an oil does physically, it also translates into the metaphysical. So we know that lemongrass is high in citrol, which is very cleansing for the body. So energetically, Lemongrass is really good for cleansing away that that doesn't serve us. I often refer to lemongrass as a sword of light. Cutting away blockages, cutting away confusion, cutting away anything that's no longer serving you. Now, palm rosa, similar in its appearance, is your sword of love. We talk about love and light, love and light. So palm rosa brings in this energy of love and brings clarity in love. If you're not sure about clarity in a relationship if you need it palm rosa is great for that if you're not sure how to lead with love how to it, it, you know palm rosa is amazing when we need to have a, a tough conversation with someone anoint yourself with that bring in that sword and have that sword of strength but that sword of love to be able to talk to someone strongly and powerfully but still with love instead of aggression that kind of thing so i love lemongrass and palm rosa I kind of use them hand in hand, like I've got these two swords, like a warrior, light and love, and they can be absolutely beautiful in, in that way. Vanessa, do you want to pick, pick a yeah. leaf? So um, I'll choose basil. I love basil as well. I really love pity grain too. And I saw earlier black spruce, so I'm going to cover a little and a big, right? So we've got narrow focus with the basil, really, really great for hyperintention and then the broader perspective of the spruce. So basil, I loved anchoring basil with, you know, any time I needed to concentrate and study, and I'd do things like basil, rosemary, lemon or lime, for instance, and that would just help my creative juices to flow and to keep focus and direction. Um, I really love it with eucalyptus as well. So eucalyptus to increase oxygenation and to open. Eucalyptus is native to here. I'll cover a few of the leaves while I'm going. And absolutely incredible to cleanse and clear and purify the atmosphere with. Basil's gift is devotion. So it's a beautiful one to self-care with. I'm devoted to me, to look after me. So a beautiful one to massage on your body with rosemary, frankincense, and copaiba when you're feeling tense points in your body, when you feel contracted and like you're holding and you just need to surrender. If you want to increase flow, add some cypress to that. Um, I really love working with basil to stimulate my mind and to come up with new ideas. So I'll often align that with Siberian fir and some lemon. Love those. So black spruce, let me cover some black spruce with you. In her species name, Pisea Mariana, she takes us back to the roots of Mariana is Maria Mary. So I really love coming into deeper connection with the energy around La Madonna, Mother Mary, or the Black Madonna. So 
each of these um, pages, I mean, they're so full of goodness. We've got a lot of the history and the lore and, and storytelling in there, but they're also aligned with a practice. So, you know, the, 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 the black spruce, if you think about this fresh perspective, you think about dipping into the infinite realm of possibilities, like infinite possibilities, and black spruce can help guide you there. If we come into this energy of um, the lineage of the Marys, it's around nurturing and self-love and compassion, but there's also a lot of strength and resilience there. Our practice in this, if I can just share for a moment, if you just close your eyes for a moment and just imagine Black Spruce wrapping around you, just breathing him in. Mother Mary's virtues can be effectively called upon in times of need. Her strength through adversity, her resilience, endurance, unconditional love, servant heart, and nurturing. Mother Mary was a powerful priestess and initiator in ancient law and transformation. Anoint the tops of your feet and palms of your hands with black spruce, pausing to inhale the oil's magical aroma. Summon the comforting presence of Mother Mary around you feeling her direction and care. And Black Spruce says, my soul reminds me to tap into universal energy. So if you want to tap into, I love Mother Mary. I just so do beyond religion, beyond all of that iconic stuff. I just love the energy of the sacred feminine. So a blend we have in here is Black Spruce, Bergamo, Myrrh and Rose. Yeah. I love one thing I'll just finish on with, with the black spruce and the basil. Black spruce is about eternal wonder, dipping into eternity, that infinite realm of possibilities, broadening, broadening your perspective that way. Basil, with its devotion and the, the sharpness, you know, the precision that it has, will help you bring what comes in, the impressions you receive, the intuitive stuff, and to bring it in in a way that serves you into this earth plane. That's me. Okay, let's go on to our next element, the element of fire. If you're following along with the book, that's one page, page 175. What do we think of when we think of fire? You know, our Leos, our Sagittarians, our Aries, what are some words? I'd love to see them in the chat as well. What comes to mind? Hot, yes. Warmth, comfort, passion. That's one of my favorite words, yes. And, you know, sometimes I hear people use the word destruction. But, you know, I remember when I was in Yosemite National Park, uh, probably about five years ago now, and there'd been a massive wildfire through there. And I said to the ranger that we were touring with, oh, this is so sad. And he said, no, 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 this is actually great. He said, for decades now, the pine trees here have dominated the landscape because their needles are so acidic, they drop to the ground and they kill everything else. And what we're gonna find over the next few decades is a whole new forest will regenerate because those pine trees aren't there to kind of acidify everything else. So yes, fire closes some doors, and, but fire opens other doors. For, so a key word I love for fire is transformation. Now, a lot of the time when we're thinking about transformation and change, we start thinking about, right, what can I change out there? If someone else, if my partner or my kids or my boss could just sort themselves out, my life would be better. But as we know, if you can't, if you have, we have to be the change we want to see in the world. And one of the simplest ways and something else we explore in the book is the chakras. And this is a really, as we balance these different energy centers in us, we can bring the change about it. Now, what part of a plant do you think might be associated with the element of fire. I've seen a couple were popped in the chat a little bit before. Everyone's kind of getting into the fire element. Not the seeds, no, but the fruit. So limes, your bergamots and all that type of thing. And what we found quite simply is the color of the fruit is connected with that chakra. So for example, we've got all these beautiful citruses. And I know we've got clementine at the moment which is absolutely amazing. What I love about Clementine, one thing. So you may have seen just at the start of this webinar before Vesta came in, Paul Ovens, her partner, was setting up the computer for her. And Paul Ovens believes we don't need another citrus. And he's in, he, whenever he says that, he gets in big trouble from both myself and Vanessa. Because one thing that we really don't, that 
oh, I'll use the word upsets us, is people go, oh, all citruses are the same. That's like me. That's as dangerous as saying all women are the same. That'll get me in big trouble. <laughs> so as we get to know each of the citruses, they're different. Clementine is amazing. It's the oil of present and finding joy in the moment. A lot of the time we're worrying about the past, we're worrying about the future, and we forget about what's happening now. It's a great offering. Again, doTERRA, I don't know how they do this, but they offer the best products at the best times. I know in America, that's your product of the month this month that you get for free. You know, this is the time when many of us stayed at home. There's words like, you know, being in lockdown and, and all those types of things. I love the word hibernation. Allow this to be a time, not when your kids and your family think, oh my God, I remember that year when I wasn't allowed to go to school and see my friends. But rather, I remember that time when I got to spend time with my parents and it was the most special year of my life. Clementine helps us find joy right in that very moment and drops us into the moment. Whereas tangerine, another one of my favourites, has been used throughout the world in many different traditions. But in China, it's been renowned for protecting the home when you go travelling. So not that many of us are travelling at the moment, but if you're going away on a holiday or trip, Diffuse tangerine around your space, and that's really going to help you protect the space, but also protects the traveller and awakens that inner curiosity. How often as adults do we get stuck in the same routine time and time again, and we almost, um, you know, like life gets boring. And tangerine kind of goes, hey, it's more out there, and really helps to awaken that, at our curiosity in that type of way. Now, before I hand over to Vanessa, there's one more fruit oil I want to talk about, which I know that, we, we get it in Australia, we get it in Asia, and I'm pretty sure that the North Americans got it as an LTO. And it might be sitting there and you're like, what the freak do I do with that oil? And that is Litsia. Who got Litsia? Oh, there we go. Minx is reading my mind. <laughs> exactly. Now, Litsia comes from a purple berry. So although we've got these citruses working on these lower chakras, you've got Litsia right here up on the crown. Now, Litsia has a really, it's great for cleansing the air. That's why it was brought out in some of the Asian countries like China first, because of their air pollution. But on an energetic level, it's amazing. Now, before I was talking about those two terms you kind of hear from all the spiritual people, love and light, love and light, love and light. But I actually believe there's a third spiritual energy. There's love, there's light, and there's laughter. Think about it. Anything you can laugh at has no power over you. If someone's giving you a hard time, <laughs> you get this, laugh it off, it doesn't affect you anymore. If this COVID-19 pandemic is, is stressing you out, if you can laugh at it, I'm not taking away from the seriousness of it, but if, you know, I remember once when I had three flat tyres on three different cars in the same month. And I, by the end of it, I was like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Because we... It, it just arises above it. It's probably why we have a laughing Buddha and not a crying Buddha. So Litsia cleanses the air physically, but think after an argument or any kind of disagreement, if you can move back to a state of laughter and fun, it cleanses as well. So Litsia brings in, I can, it's kind of like the mandarins and the children of the fruit family, but Litsia is like that teenager. It's like, whatever. That, that, if Litsia could speak, you're probably like, whatever. <laughs> Don't care. That kind of thing as well. So I love Litsia. Yeah, beautiful. Um, Courtney, is this meant to go for one hour? Because we've got one more element to cover. I'm going to cover, can you just message me if you're there? Um, just write down in the comments. So I'm going to quickly cover two other fruits that often get neglected, and it's black pepper and juniper berry. Okay, I'm being told they're good. All right, awesome. So the citruses and the fruits are renowned for bringing more lightness and brightness into our life. Sometimes we need to look at the unknown stuff or what lies in the shadow or the darker corners of our mind or our heart or our room, right? The inner rooms of our being. Black pepper and juniper take us there fearlessly. So let's look at um, black pepper for when you want to really tap into your inner sovereignty, beingness, your truth, you know, warding against other people's stories around who they feel you should be. So this is like, he reminds you that you're totally safe. You're safe to be you. Like, just, just stay in that place. 
when you want to go into and meet the shadow aspect safely, because I don't believe in hanging out in that space indefinitely. It's like go and meet and greet, acknowledge, be grateful for the stuff that, that you've learned from the challenges in your life. The shadow stuff is more around um, comments we make like when we're younger. I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to yell and holler like my mum did at us. And then you find yourself as an adult yelling, hollering at the kids, you know, and it's like, oh, did I just do that? And, you know, it's like when we come into peace with those parts of us, true peace with them, we own that part. And with humility, we can turn to our little one and say, honey, I am so sorry for the way I spoke to you right now. It so wasn't appropriate. Can we start over? I love you so much. And just really be down on our knees before the divine in our in our children or beloved or whoever it was we were speaking to in that way. Juniper Berry is around fear, protection, discovery. What can I discover within me? Those parts of me that I tucked away that I didn't want to look at or own, what can I discover there and bring to the light? And own is one of my strengths. Like when we bring it to the light, we have a healthy relationship with it. We can really weave some magic with it. So um, I really love working with the chakras as well, but I, I just love to anoint like my Ajna or my crown or just going up, up higher into these chakras. And it, don't worry if you don't know what they are or you just take the oil and just like sprinkle your hands and just sprinkle up and down and, and go up, you know. Blue Lotus goes woof, right up into there, right? So just, just, just dabble, just play, be you. The third eye chakra, a beautiful roller body you can make for yourself is with juniper berry, basil, peppermint, spearmint, and star anise. That was another LTO. So I see that in the darkness lies what I am yet to embrace. So in the darkness, right there, lying in the darkness is what I am yet to embrace. And if we can get really comfortable with that, we are so much lighter and so much brighter. Okay, let's move to the next one. And yes, this will be available to rewatch later, you guys. If you don't have okay. twins, can you substitute something? Yes, absolutely. Like these are just guides, you guys. And we are not big into putting number of drops. Use your intuition. But I will show you something really, really quickly while Adam gets ready for the next one. I'm going to do a quick teach you blending. Maybe we can, we'll get on again, Courtney, and we can go a bit deeper with this if you want. But take your bottles, take the lids off your bottles, and I've just got rosemary, I've got, sorry, eucalyptus, Frankie Boy, and wild orange in my hands. And if I have them all at even levels, right, and I breathe it in, I might just go, mm, let me just, what's going to happen if I do this? So one is higher, the next one's a little lower, and the next one's lower again. Can you see that? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go three drops of Trust Frankie Boy to be high for me. He's like my, my love and heart song. And then I've got two drops of eucalyptus and one of wild orange. So that's going to be awesome for like respiratory support and opening myself to receive life and life's gifts and bringing joy in and bigger perspective and connect deeply with my truth and the divine within me, right? So anyway, that's a good tip. Put it in fractionated coconut oil and aromatically dressed. There's a whole part in here on aromatic dressing and aromatic anchoring. You've got to get this book, you guys. Read it through and it'll give you so many tips throughout it about the art of blending and doing all of this yummy stuff with it so that your life is enhanced. It's lighter and brighter. Take it away, Adam. So one other thing that we talk about on page 31 of the book as well is what if, what if I don't have that oil? How do I get that or you know, that type of thing as well. Now, one thing you're going to find in this book is you're going to find some weird oils such as Zadrave, Damiana, Tarragon. Mm -hmm. like, but Doterio doesn't make those oils. But they do. They're in blends. And so you can actually work with Digestin or Passion or Chia and, and draw and get to understand those different oils by working with the blend as well. And that's how you can tune into it and work with it energetically. So we've gone through the four elements of earth, water, air, and fire. So we probably should have, we should have gone through every part of the planet now that's given us oils, haven't we? What have we missed, you guys? Quickly write what it in missed? the chat. What have we missed? This is the last one. So you guys know we're on the last segment. Yes, seeds. Oh, my God, I love you guys. We've missed seeds, but what else have we missed? And resins. Resins. Yes. yes. Exactly. 
So these go into a fifth element. And this element is sometimes known as Akasha or spirit. We, we call it Akasha in our book. And basically what Akasha is, is you know, we can see earth, we can see water, we can kind of see air and fire. But Akasha is that, that inner essence. It's sometimes known as you know, our soul or our spirit, that thing behind that magic that just makes everything happen. And when you look at seeds and resins, they are the inner being of what a tree or a plant is or will become. So I'm going to talk about seeds and I'm going to let, allow Vanessa to talk about her favorite resins. So seed, when you think of a seed, what is a seed? It's potential and it's power. Because when I have a seed in my hand or when I plant a seed in the earth, we have the potential to become a great plant. And as that seed grows towards the light, it becomes what it will become. So one of my favorite oils, and I think it's an oil that gets neglected, is on page 222. It's fennel. And fennel, its gift is choice. Now, I want you to think about the idea of responsibility for a moment. And fennel really helps us with this. You know, responsibility has kind of become a bad word. You know, maybe when we're children, like, Someone ate the last cookie and your parents want to know who's responsible. We're like, oh, I'm not responsible. We don't want to be responsible. 200 years ago in the USA, only 5% of people relied on someone else for their income. Now, 95% of people rely on someone else for their well-being and their income. And so there seems to have been this movement over time of this handover of responsibility. And if I don't like where my life is, it's the government's fault or my boss's fault or my partner's fault or my children's fault, or my parents' fault, or someone else's fault. Now, these are just perspectives. Who's to blame? That, that's, we could argue till the cows come home on that. But I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins, because I love grown men yelling at me in the morning. And he always says, if you don't like, what, if you don't like where you are in your life, just make a choice. Make a different choice. And if you make the wrong choice, make another choice. And as we start to make choices, we start to gain responsibility in our lives. We, make, we, we can't always change what's happening out in the world, but we always have the choice on how we deal with that. Now, fennel, again, remember I said physically, translates to metaphysical. Fennel, we know, works with the digestive system. It stops cramping. That's why it's in digest then. You know when sometimes we get a bit of a stomachache when we've got some food challenges, but sometimes, you know, if, if you got a message from your boss or your partner who said, there's something wrong and I need to talk to you later today, we feel that unease in our stomach. Sometimes kids don't want to go to school because they've got a bellyache, but there's not, nothing wrong with our belly. It's because we've lost power. We, we, we've lost choice. We don't know what's going to happen. Fennel brings you back. It helps you digest to be empowered to make choices. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to be confident. And fennel is an amazing one for helping you connect with your power. So any of the seeds, coriander makes you look after yourself. Dill helps you look after your, um, remember your own ingenuity. Cumin, your own power and your own courage. All the seeds are amazing in that way for bringing you back to your core power and the potential you have to be the best you can be. Mm, thanks, Adam. Does that help for you guys? Deep relationship with the seeds? I love tapping into the pure potentiality there and you can align it really beautifully with the resins, we cover resins quite extensively in our book. Let's look at Copaiba, Frankincense, who you'll just hear me drop into saying Frankie boy, and Myrrh. Each of these understand pain. They understand challenge. They understand resilience. You look at where Frankincense and Myrrh grow and boy, are they resilient. They're growing and thriving in lands that we could barely understand how to survive in, let alone thrive in. To receive the resin from these plants, an incision is made for the frankincense and myrrh, and the resin rises to the surface to heal the place where the incision was made. This is known as the frankincense or myrrh tea tears. And it reminds me of the phrase, blood of my blood. They work with us deeply to connect with our inner fluidity, 
Kopaiba is tapped, it's a little different, it's tapped and the sap flows out, the, the essence of the trees flow out and give us this resin and we create pure essential oil from them. So if we look at some of the words, Kopaiba reminds us that metamorphosis is part of our life. No matter what we are going through in our lives, we can choose to transform. We can choose to change. And Kopaiba reminds us to know ourselves. His gift to us is know thyself. And if you just take off the lid off the bowl and inhale him, you'll receive this beautiful transmission. Frankincense is around that transcendence to enlightenment, divinity, the sacred masculine or divine masculine. Myrrh brings in the divine feminine. So you could do a beautiful blend with frankincense and myrrh to bring that inner marriage, to return to the sanctity and the sacredness of you as a complete magnificent being. When we work with the resins, we can lean into them to overcome adversity and challenges. So right now, lean in, lean in. Work with them every day. Not a day goes by where I'm not dancing with the resins. Frankincense in particular. Copa Eva and frankincense have been in my blends, my aromatic dressing blends every single day right now with other essential oils that I just feel drawn to. Like Lang Ylang and, and Green Mandarin maybe, some Cypress, the flow. Yeah? So I won't go too much more deeply into this because we're out of time. Suffice to say... May I invite you all to aromatically dress every single day. You just take a little bowl, put some carrier oil in, like the fractionated coconut oil, about 10 mils, a couple of squirts, and five or six drops in total of essential oil. You can do more, of course, but five or six drops, just play with this. And you might want to do a magnificence blend, which is like something like, you know, two drops of Frankie Boy, two drops of Wild Orange, and a drop of Lavender. And tap into that inner yumminess and you just aromatically dress so after a shower or bath you're going to dip and rub and get it all over your body and feed and nourish the largest organ of your body and feed and nourish your internal body your emotional body bergamot obviously it's photosensitive so if you're in a sunny climb you don't want to go outside with bergamot right now but bergamot is amazing for anxious states for fear both known and unknown Worrisome thoughts, add bergamot to it. Bergamot, lavender and frankincense are amazing to work with those anxious feelings, right? And also feeling low in your mood. Bergamot is like, you know, sunshine in a bottle. Combine with frankincense, maybe some Melissa, bring Melissa in, yeah? The essential oils in this book, as Adam said, where we go with them, that we don't we don't have all of the single notes in doTERRA. We don't want you to go and find them elsewhere necessarily. The quality is not going to be doTERRA. But because we're working with plants here, and this is where you can just come into such deep gratitude, you can just call in the energy. If you don't have a particular oil, you know, so say I've said, and we've said in a blend, um, frankincense, alemi, and myrrh. Alemi is another resin, right, for the Holy Trinity. We don't have alemi. Call in the energy of alemi, just this golden, beautiful resin, like a shroud over you, blessing you. Mama Gaia is intelligent. She knows. She, she has it all there. We just need to tap energetically into what we need. The last oil for anxious states was, for anxiety, was bergamot. So bergamot, frankincense, and lavender together are amazing. Alemi, E-L-E-M-I. Okay, and it's, it's in the book as well. So please stand in your gratitude every day for the sacrifices made from Mama Gaia, from the growers, from the harvesters, from the people who distill them, for doTERRA's foresight. And remember that you have a family here in doTERRA and at Oil Life, right? We're all here together by each other's side as a family. That's a big part of why we're all here in doTERRA. We found our soul family. We found home. I'll let you wrap up, Adam, before I say thank you to everyone.
So thank you so much for joining us over the last hour. And I know in some places it's quite late at night. So I really appreciate that, especially the couple that joined us from over in Europe as well. It is our intention in this book and everything we've shared with you, it's just a snippet of what's actually in the book. But as you come to understand the plant, where the oil comes from, what color the flower is, what color the fruit is, how big is the plant, what does it do physically? So when doTERRA brings out new oil, you can almost start to understand that oil by looking at that plant. And that's how we guide you through the book. But we give you detailed practices and everything on blends all throughout the book as well. Now, as you can see, we've struggled to keep everything into an hour. We always run over. And there's so many oils we would have loved to have spoken about. We would have loved to speak about geranium and desert fir and eucalyptus and so many more. There are so many. They're each our own little children that we love so much. So one thing we have, and Oil Life is going to pop in the comment section in just a moment, Vanessa and I are going to do an eight-week masterclass course. So it starts in a couple of weeks' time. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide the oils into eight groups. So we're going to do roots one day and we're going to do woods the next. And we're going to spend a whole hour just on that section and really go into each of those oils. It's going to be on Zoom like this one is, but we'll also have a Facebook group where if you can't be on the live Zoom, you can re-watch it as many times as you want afterwards. And we can ask questions. We can go in deeper and we can really get through each of those oils as well type of thing. So um, the details for that. Um, and we've got a special. Um, for the next 48 hours, if you type in when you go to order, at the very top, there'll be a promo code. Put in early bird, all in capitals, and it'll knock some money off that as well. It's also in Australian dollars, and our Australian dollar is not looking good at the moment. So for the American, it's a bargain. Um, <laughs> so again, our book is available from Oil Life. Um, it's you know, for Americans, for Canadians, North Americans, that's going to be the best place to get it from. Um, Australians, we've run out of run out in Australia. So if you're really impatient, you can order from Oil Life or we will have it in Australia in around late May or probably closer to June now and that type of thing as well. But any final questions we can answer before we go? Thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure to interact with you, even if it had to have been through the chat. I think so someone asked the title of the book. It's called Gifts of the Essential Oils. <clears throat> gifts of the essential oils and there's over a hundred essential oils in here and there's just under 250 pages of goodness in here. Adam, can you just explain again where can we put the discount code is the question. Okay, so on the you you go to that link, which is the Adam B events link, and you'll find the, the oil um, course. You click on that and on the top there'll be an, I think it's a little blue writing it says enter discount code there. So it's on the first not when you check out, it's on the first page and it will drop down the ticket price when it's showing the ticket price. Normally 59 Australian dollars and it'll drop it in there as well. So if you have any problems, I think you can send me an email from there and I'll help you out as well. So the name, the name of the course, Oil Life has actually put the link in the chat. Just scroll up, it's in there. No, it's not Crystal Connections course. What have we called it again, Adam? I, mean, I think just eight week masterclass. Gifts of the Essential Oils Masterclass. So I also yeah. teach crystals and animal guides. There's a few other courses there, but look for the oil one. Don't worry if you book the wrong one. Send me an email, we'll get it sorted. Or you can book several as well. Essential Oils Masterclass. Um, if you could just drop the link in again for that, I think people are missing it. Okay, so thank you so much, you guys. We hope you had fun. Did you all have fun? New way to dance with the oils, play with the oils. Thanks for giving us some of your valuable time. Thank you to Oil Life for having us and for stocking this amazing book. Let's just get it out to as many people as possible, you guys. This is a beautiful way to share gratitude for Mama Gaia and for connecting with the plants, not just for these, you know, little brown bottles and the essence in them, right? We want to connect with the plant, with the source and the gifts that are coming to us, okay? So, no, you don't need the book for the course. You can just come and do the course and we will talk you through it all. We're going to put beautiful blends up that aren't even in the book so you'll get extra blends, extra sacred practices. There'll be crystal magic in there as well. So lots of goodness. Um, question, will the course be recorded? If you book and pay for the course, it will be recorded and you'll be sent the recording, yes. 
And we actually are doing it at 8 a.m. Perth time. So in America, that works out in New York to be about 8 p.m. And I think in so Florida, that would be about 8 p.m. on a Sunday night. And if you're over in Los Angeles, I'm assuming the three or four hours difference, that would probably be about 5 p.m. on a Sunday night. But if you can't make the live lesson, it goes into a private Facebook group and can watch all the lessons over and over again. So the question is, if you've done Adam's Nature's Healers course, can you still get more from this one? Absolutely. Plus, you get both of us. You get one to twin powers activated with this course. Yeah, exactly. The things are changing all of the time, all of the time, and we're learning all the time. We're always stretching ourselves to learn more. So absolutely, you'll get so much good juiciness from it. Oh, the other thing we said we're doing the eight-week course as well, if doTERRA brings out and surprises us with any new oils, I know in America they've been bringing out LTOs, that yeah. next week we will dive it, we will just put everything on pause and dive into that oil so you know what that new oil is about as well. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, love you guys. Thank you for joining us. Have the best time. What day of the week will the course be live? Monday, Monday morning, 8 a.m. Perth, Western Australia time. It's going to start. It's going to be so Sunday for the North America. Sunday for Pardon? North America. That'll be Sunday in North America. Yeah, Sunday, North America. Okay, all right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Oil Life, for having us. Grab your books, everyone, and have fun with her. She is a glory. Enjoy. <laughs>